The relationship between a boy and a cow is actually is very difficult to separate the two. Age group factor is also an issue that uh, is bringing a lot of confusion among the boy child. In the Maasai community, the Maasai believe in big herds of cattle, big herds of sheep and goats. And the labor can only come from the boy. And so the boy has been used to herd the cattle. And uh, this has really disadvantaged the boy child. Boy child here um, is actually not given a lot of priority by, you know, development partners by government, by, you know, even the society. Because they expect their boy child to grow naturally. Just like what we used to do in our own traditional ways. For you to be recognized to be a man, then you have to go through the cultural rights of the boy child among the Maasai, which is Moranism. You have to be circumcised, and then after circumcision, then you have to show that you are a man by making sure that you go through the rites of Moranism. Things have changed, including the way we do things. And one way that has really changed is going, back, going to school. Many boys are not going to school. Like I, in particular, I could not be in school if it was not the effort of the police and the Kenya government, whereby they raided my village, and I and two more were taken hostage, and later we are bundled into a police land rover and taken to school. For flying, you see the flying? Father birds are animals with backbone, isn't it? I dropped out of school when I was in Form 1, and I stayed at home for, for 10 years, about 11 years. And I went back to school, to secondary school. When my son was, uh, was uh, five years old, I was able to pursue my secondary school education. I proceeded to the teacher's training college. And then again, I proceeded to the university. Now, right now, I have a diploma in primary uh, education. We face so many challenges while we are in school because our peers, our age mates, were not in school. They were practicing other things that were set up by our, the rules of our community including Moranishi. Through this manhood process, the child is not able to think of school because they think now I've become a man, I'm able to fend for myself. And so you find most boys go out there either to get their own herds of cattle and sheep and start herding them, or they start this motorbike business. <laughs> Mimi this makes so many boys who are in school to run away from school. And because their parents have no passion for education, they also make sure that they don't support their boys while in school, including they don't buy school uniform, they don't buy shoes for them, they don't pay for school fees, they don't support them anyhow. There is no adequate time in the household because they are occupied with some more activities that are home-based than class requirement. The traditional Maasai house would not allow learning in the evening or taking preps in their classes because of the nature of the structure. Therefore, the boys and girls who also are affected. The environment around does not favor him outside the boarding school. As long as the culture continues, you expect this thing to continue.
Uh, last year alone, we lost uh, 16 boys in one particular school called uh, Nkutoto Primary School. And uh, they said they dropped from school because of uh, negative cultural practices and uh, because of the engagement of their peer groups in small-scale farming. They saw that uh, driving from, from school would earn the money into the farming of uh, tomatoes, onions, and some of them went to look for a place to take care of uh, livestock. The government is trying to see the transition rate of primary to secondary school. And uh, the government is taking, especially the Ministry of Education, is taking that one seriously, very closely with head teachers. While we have supported uh, the schools, which are 10 schools in this, uh, in this uh, program area, uh, for 10 classrooms. These 10 classrooms are standards. We have also seen some enrollment at the early stages. Because of the attraction of the classrooms, they would bring them in. But when they are in class five, class six, they begin to think about uh, dropping out. And our struggle is to maintain them, to retain them from this school. Actually, the best thing we can be able to do to maintain the boys in school is actually to set up boarding schools in particular areas so that we can be able to create an environment conducive where they can be able to survive. The moment these children are put in an environment that they feel they are safer and they feel they are going towards their goal, then these boys will be able to reach their goal by completing their education. My appeal is to, for all stakeholders to come on board in terms of development. What I mean by stakeholders is other NGOs, CBOs, banks, supermarkets, anybody who is working in the communities. Let's work together towards making this goal of having a future for the children of this country.